All right, so in this problem, I have 2 to the power of x is equal to 3 to the power of x. So I obviously want to find the value of x here. So for my solution, I'm going to first start by writing 2 to the power of x is equal to 3 to the power of x. And I'm going to take the log of base 2 on both sides. So now I have log base 2 of 2 to the power of x is equal to log base 2 of 3 to the power of x. Now, if I have something in the form log base a of a, this is simply equal to 1. So as you see here, we have log base 2 of 2. And actually before I cancel these two out, if I have something in the form log base a of to the power of b, I can move this exponent of b to the front. So it's going to equal b times log a. So in this case, I have x as my exponent, so I can move this to the front. So now I have x times log base 2 of 2 is equal to, I'm going to do the same thing over here, log base 2 of 3 to the power of x. I can move x to the front here. So now I have this is equal to x times log base 2 of 3. Now remember, if I have something in the form log base a of a, this is equal to 1. So log base 2 of 2 to cancel out so I get simply left with x times 1 is equal to x times log base 2 of 3 and x times 1 is simply x so I get x is equal to x times log base 2 of 3 now I'm going to subtract both sides by x base log sorry x log base 2 of 3 So these two cancel out, I get x minus x times log base 2 of 3 is equal to 0. Now if I factor out x, I get x times 1 minus log base 2 of 3 is equal to 0. And if I divide both sides by 1 minus log base 2 of 3, these two cancel out and I'm left with x is equal to 0. All right, so in this problem, I have a to the power of 3 plus a squared equals 36. So to actually find all solutions to this problem, I need to first start by finding one solution. So to do that, I'm just going to plug in some numbers and see if they work. So let's try 1. If we plug in 1, we get 2 is equal to 36, which is wrong. If we plug in 2, we get 8 plus 4, which is 12 equals 36, which is wrong. If we plug in 3, we get 3 to the power of 3, which is 27. 27 plus 3 squared is 9. 36 equals 36. So a equals 3. This is one solution of a. And now that we found one solution of a, we can use this later. So, let's, so we can use this by making a to the power of 3 plus a squared equal 3 to the power of 3 plus 3 squared because we know that a equals 3. So I'm just plugging in 3 and making them equal to each other. So now I'm going to subtract 3 to the power of 3 plus 3 squared on both sides. So these two cancel out. I get a to the power of 3 plus a squared minus 3 to the power of 3 plus 3 squared minus 3 squared, sorry. Is equal to 0. Now I can rewrite this to be in the form a minus 3 times a squared plus 3 squared plus three a plus a plus 3 is equal to 0. 
and this simplifies to a minus 3 times a squared plus 12 plus 49 sorry plus 4a is equal to 0. So now this gives me two equations. I have a minus 3 is equal to 0, and I have a squared plus 4a plus 12 is equal to 0. So for a minus 3 equals 0, a obviously equals 3, so this is one solution of a. And for a squared plus 4a plus 12 equals 0, you have to use the quadratic formula to solve this, and I'm not going to waste your time by doing that. But if you do end up using it, you get that there is no solution because you get the square root of negative number. So now that we know that a equals 3, remember how... This is actually going to be our only solution because this doesn't work. So a equals 3 is our only solution. All right, so in this problem, I have a to the power of x is equal to 80. So to solve this, I'm going to first rewrite 80 here as 8 times 10. So now I have a to the power of x is equal to 8 times 10. And now I'm going to divide both sides by 8. So now I have a to the power of x over 8 is equal to 10. So if I have something in the form a to the power of m over a to the power of n, this is equal to a to the power of m minus n. So a to the power of x over a to the power of 1, that's going to equal a to the power of x minus 1, which is equal to 10. Now, 8 here is the same thing as 2 to the power of 3. So now I have 2 to the power of 3 to the power of x minus 1 is equal to 10. And if I have something in the form a to the power of m to the power of n, this is equal to a to the power of m times n. So 2 to the power of 3 to the power of x minus 1. That's going to equal 2 to the power of 3 times x minus 1, which is equal to 10. And I can distribute the 3, so I'll get 2 to the power of 3x minus 3 is equal to 10. Now I'm going to take the log on both sides. So I'll get log 2 to the power of 3x minus 3 is equal to log 10. And log 10 is equal to 1. So I get 1 is equal to 3x minus 3 times log 2, because I can move this to the front. And now if I divide both sides by log 2, these two cancel out, and I get 3x minus 3 is equal to 1 over log 2. And now I can add 3 on both sides. So I get 3x is equal to 1 over log 2 plus 3. And if I divide both sides by 3, I get x is equal to 1 over 3 log 2 plus 1. All right, so in this problem, I have 8 to the power of x is equal to 16. So I want to find the value of x here. So for my solution, I'm going to start by rewriting my equation here. So my equation is 8 to the power of x is equal to 16. Now, before we start doing anything, let's just inspect this problem real quick. So if I plug in x equals 1 into this equation, I get a to the power of 1 is equal to 16, which a to the power of 1 is the same thing as 8, so I get 8 equals 16, which is false, right? Now if I plug in x equals 2, I get a to the power of 2 is equal to 16, and a to the power of 2 is 64. So I get 64 equals 16. And notice how there is a big gap between 8 and 64. So we know that the value of x is not going to be a whole number but a decimal, and it's going to be somewhere in between 1 and 2. So 
x is greater than 1 but less than 2. We know this. Now, how are we going to actually solve this problem and find the exact value of x? Well, what I can do is rewrite 16 as 8 times 2. Now, what I'm going to do is divide both sides by 8. So then these two cancel out, and I get 8 to the power of x over 8 is equal to 2. Now, if I have something in the form a to the power of m over a to the power of n, this is equal to a to the power of m minus n. So a to the power of x over a to the power of 1 is equal to a to the power of x minus 1, which is equal to 2. Now, a is the same thing as 2 to the power of 3. So I get 2 to the power of 3 to the power of x minus 1 is equal to 2. And if I have something in the form a to the power of m to the power of n, this is equal to a to the power of m times n. So 2 to the power of 3 to the power of x minus 1 is the same thing as 2 to the power of 3 times x minus 1. And 3 times x minus 1, I can distribute 3, so I get 2 to the power of 3x minus 3 is equal to 2. And 2 is the same thing as 2 to the power of 1. And if I have something in the form a to the power of m is equal to a to the power of n, this means that m is equal to n. So this means that 3x minus 3 is equal to 1. And now if I add 3 on both sides, I get 3x is equal to 4, and x is equal to 4 over 3. Now, there actually is another way to solve this problem. What I can also do is, at the start, rewrite both of these in bases of 2. So 8 is the same thing as 2 to the power of 3, so I get 2 to the power of 3 to the power of x, and 16 is the same thing as 2 to the power of 4. Now, this is the same thing as 2 to the power of 3x is equal to 2 to the power of 4, meaning that 3x is equal to 4, and x is equal to 4, to 4 over 3. So this is a much simpler method of solving this problem.